internet, my name is Lave, and I finally watched Brightburn, which has just hit UK cinemas. This one is from producer James Guardians of the Galaxy Gun. It's also been written by his brother and cousin, Brian and Mark, and it's directed by David Yaravesky, who I think has an acting credit in Guardians of the Galaxy, but he also directed the music video starring the Hoff. Now they're telling the story of a farmer and his wife struggling to conceive a baby, but then their prayers are seemingly answered when one crash lands from space. So they adopt him and raise him as their own, and soon discover that he has certain gifts, but he's not necessarily a super boy. So the concept should sound familiar because it is a deconstruction of the Superman mythos, asking what would happen if this kid didn't stand for truth, justice, and all that stuff. What if he was the complete opposite? And it's a really good idea, one that I was completely sold on by the trailers, which weren't hiding what it was at all, with strikingly similar imagery to the other Superman movies, like even down to the typography that they used. It should also be noted that this is a low budget movie with apparently a budget of only $7 million. Now to put that in context, the original Superman from 1978 had a budget of $55 million. That's before inflation. Zack Snyder's recent Man of Steel had a budget of 220 plus million. So I really do admire this film for, for looking way more expensive than it actually is. I think there is something about low budget films where you have to be really ultra creative and, and this film has got that in spades. I do wish though that maybe they'd spent a little bit more time in the writing development stage because some of it is obviously deliberately familiar aping the, the Superman films. I mean it even has some of the same lines like I believe you were sent here for a reason but there were other times where I was a bit iffy about it when it was trying to be its own thing, like when Brandon is describing the difference between wasps and bees, one being predators and one being pollinators, and it's like... <laughs> foreshadowing. Performance wise though I thought the kid that played Brandon was okay as this super psycho especially when things really get triggered in him and I did like Elizabeth Banks as his mum who's full of motherly love for him which makes her a bit naive to everything that starts happening. I can't say I recognise the actor they got to play the dad obviously the equivalent to Pa Kent although I will say that this character maybe isn't as optimistic or as hopeful as his on screen counterparts. I think he realises early on that they might have have a bit of a bad egg here and he does have quite an amusing scene where he has to have the talk with his son which turns out to be the worst advice possibly ever given because he says so oh, you should sometimes give in to your urges and the kid's like yeah green light let's go and it's like yeah that's pretty disturbing but performance wise I think the core family the core performances are, are okay it's the supporting cast and characters that maybe could have benefited from some more experienced actors and and some better writing. Now, obviously, I don't want to give anything away, but there is a moment where one of Brandon's victims witnesses some pretty outrageous stuff, and his reaction to it, let's say the acting falls a little bit short. I mean, he sees some stuff like Brandon floating and smashing stuff up with his bare hands, and he's like, nope, nope, this isn't happening. Whereas, if I was in that situation, if I saw that, I would genuinely shit a brick and be like, yeah, get me the hell out of here, which is a shame because I actually think it's it's quite realistic in, in general, the film, and some of the performances made me think, oh, it's turning it into a bit of a satire. But there are some pretty satisfying deaths in the film, which get increasingly more violent as Brandon begins to discover the extent of his powers. But the film does tend to lean into the horror tropes as opposed to the action tropes which I think has been executed reasonably well for example like whenever Brandon does his like super villain stuff it's always like in the background and it's proper stalking horror movie stuff like victims will be unaware and he'll be behind the curtain he'll disappear all of that stuff which I'm fine with but it just gets a bit repetitive I, I wish they maybe could have shown him being let off the chain a bit more, kind of in the same way as Arnold Schwarzenegger in in Terminator when he storms that, that police station and he's completely unstoppable. I would have liked a similar scene in this just to vary it up a bit. 
That's not to say that the film doesn't get there by the end. And like I say, it's got a, an incredibly small budget. So there are budget constraints there. So I can't really complain too much. And what I will say about the ending is when it started playing out, I was like, yeah, this is either going to end one of two ways. And all I'll say is I was really pleased with the way they went with it. So that's my thoughts on Brightburn and pause the video if you want to take a closer look at my enjoyment tracker now. I know it sounds like I haven't been too positive about this film, but I did actually quite enjoy it. I just think it would have been amazing had it have been rated 18 as opposed to 15. If it had maybe some better actors and a better script and a bigger budget, then yeah, it would have been amazing. But I still really admire what they've achieved with with so little. So let me know your thoughts about Brightburn down in the comments. I'm, I'm filming a lot of reviews back to back at the moment. I've got a bit of a backlog. My next review is going to be Toy Story. Spoiler alert. I really, really enjoyed it. But in the meantime, thanks very much for watching this review. I really do appreciate it. If you can give it a like and don't forget to share the lathe. <laughs>